What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I am your host, Devin Witt, alongside my co-host, Joe The Show. And, uh, man, let me tell you, it's been a wild news week. I feel like there's so much that, that's been going on. Uh, but, you know, how else better to, to start a podcast than on a high note uh, with a feel-good story such as the uh, two police officers that were, were killed and one police officer who was wounded after a uh, fatal encounter with a belligerently drunk individual whose blood alcohol content was three times above the legal limit. Wow. Who would have thought guns... Are you showing the video or not? No, no, no we can't. You, okay. you, you don't want to show that. Uh, but it, it, it's a very... Like, well, context where this happened at. Okay, let I mean, me... Because people's going to hear this. Well, what are you talking You know, whatever. So at least they can go back and judge whether I, you're right under or not. You know, honestly, I'm blanking on the uh, the state at the moment. But the, the context of the situation is you have a, a gentleman who uh, was pulled over by the police. He was the passenger in the vehicle. Uh, during this police stop, it, it looked like things kind of got heated as far as an exchange between police officers and the passenger in the vehicle. Uh, at one point, I remember seeing a, a police officer push the guy over onto mm-hmm. the ground, but then proceeds to help him back up and dap him up like he's a, a good friend. Um, and also during this uh, traffic stop, this gentleman decided to say that he would shoot the officers over 800 times if he could. Um uh, so we, we fast forward just a little bit, and this man ends up making a fake phone call to the police saying, yo, we got violence at the house. Come check it out. <clears throat> and so the, the police show up, and the brother opens the door, and the moment he opens the door and takes one foot out the door, this man is hiding in the bushes and ends up firing, not kidding you, 83 rounds. Uh, which I, I believe it was like 59 of them came from a AR-15. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the rest, you know, 24 or whatever, came from uh, a 9 millimeter pistol. Now, the the police body cam footage has come out, and it, it's it's hard to watch. Uh, just because, you know, you're, you're watching people lose their lives uh, in front of you. And that, that's just a, a hard <clears throat> thing to see. Now, the, the question ultimately becomes here is like, number one... Uh, what happened? <laughs> well, yeah, but first then, it was in Hartford, Connecticut, fifty-nine rounds from an AR and twenty-four from a nine millimeter. The cops provoked it. I mean, the thing of it is, the video is choppy. That's the thing. It's a crappy video. I said that to you whenever you were talking about it. It's it doesn't show like a full like start to finish. Maybe they will reveal that more so from of the whole interaction know, exactly. But the thing of it is, make sure it is going off what they released. It shows the cop push him, not just like a little you know yeah, bump. Like pushed him, and this dude is big, a big yeah, man, yeah. and knocked him on his butt. He's drunk, whatever. But then he gets up by the cop, and it's almost like one of those bro type. Yeah, he daps him up, yeah, and you. and that's not. I I'm not going to say the cop deserved it, right? But he dang sure provoked it, and it's almost like you should look at this and like should you be surprised. That yet again we have another situation in the United States of, as far as I'm concerned, corrupt cop. It was mixed messaging for sure. <clears throat> like if I'm the police officer going from shoving a man to like picking him up and dapping him, uh, should have never you know, got it, to that it, point. It, it that's seems the, that's the point. Seems wild. Now the what I will say the the best part about the video is at the very end when the injured officer does end up pulling up behind his vehicle, firing one round uh, that enters the base of his skull and ends the threat of violence. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're talking, this is after 83 rounds are already expensed. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the issue here ultimately for me is that this shows you how hard it is to be a cop. Uh, there, there's no way around it because, I agree with that. And, and the reason why I say that is because what do you do in a situation where someone calls and says, Hey, there's domestic violence taking place at my residence but you as the police officer have no idea that this man is waiting in the bushes with loaded right. magazines ready to kill you. Well, I mean, that's what it's, I'm it's at. hard. No, I mean, you don't ever know what you're walking into. No. And that's the thing. You know, I can't, <clears throat> I've said this to these school teachers, they can complain about their pay, but yet you're still doing it. If you don't, you're scared of being a cop, don't be a cop. 
you know? It's not for everybody, you know? I got shot at and killed people when I was in Marine Corps. Well, that's one of the reasons I got out. I didn't feel <laughs> like going back, you know? I did my time, did it honorably, did my, you know, yeah. you know, but I, I, you know, I didn't really just say, hey, let's go back there and do that again. Yeah, yeah, round you know, two. It, yeah. You know, that's, yeah, that I, I'd had enough of it. I had enough, you know, death and, you know, from both sides. I just, no, I didn't want to do it again. Um, And so, you know, yeah, if you can't take it, then don't be a cop. Now, that doesn't justify it. And I'm not making it says it makes it easy. But, you know, on the same hand, I'm like, you're walking into these situations. That's what you signed up to do. Again, it doesn't make it any better by me saying that. But on the same hand, this situation, it's really hard to overlook, you know, as some crazy lunatic out there with a freaking gun starts shooting anybody. Because as far as what I can see from the video, I'm analyzing what I've seen. It, the, the dude had it coming. It was a jacked up cop. Yeah. He he should have never. It's And I say jacked up. I, I know I said corrupt cop. You know, I can't really go too far to say I don't know his background and everything. So right. I'd retract that statement for people that's listening. But very, very, to say the least, in that moment, crooked. Unprofessional. No, very crooked. Yeah, that is, yeah, you could say unprofessional is if he calls him a bad name, he should hold himself to a higher standard. That is very crooked. And yeah, I'd say start flirting with the word corrupt real quick because you shouldn't be acting like that. Now, yeah, if you want to be politically correct in today's society, yeah, you could say, well, you know, it's very unprofessional, unbecoming. You know, no, it's, it's crap. You shouldn't be treating people like that. You shouldn't be in a cop, period, doing that. That's the facts. Now, again, what I said, does he deserve being shot for it? No. But, you know, let's be fair here. If those tables were turned and that guy did that to him, he'd have went to jail. But yeah. it's okay for a cop to do it. So, I mean, there's levels to it for sure. And, you know, I, I would say at the very least, uh, his conduct during the stop was unprofessional. Was uh, that the cop that you did that cop get killed? <sighs> I hope not, because that would be a sad way to go out uh, when a man... I'm just saying, I don't. I mean, that's you. the thing. The video they, doesn't... They, yeah, like, they I don't know which cops... They didn't explain which cops were which, you know, but at the it, end of It probably the day, does now, I mean, by the time... Yeah. I'd uh, have to really it, look it went, deep it and take viral. a deep dive into it and see. Uh, the, number one, it, it's just sad. Anytime someone loses their life to gun violence in America, uh, outside of the, the realm of self-defense, uh, but then next to that, you know, it... The other kind of hard question becomes is like I, I was seeing a lot of people who back the blue and were making comments such as like, hey, anytime a man kills a police officer, it should be an immediate death sentence. And I, I kind of agree with that. But then I'm also like, well, if that's the case, we should probably apply that to every time someone murders well, an individual and see here's not the, just police <clears throat> officers because and, police officers are not a protected class of individuals yeah. they, no, they should have the same uh rights that we have but also you know the, the same standards and expectations um, they're not same expectations they should be held to a higher standard uh, just like when you're in the military you uh, know that's you're fair, you're yeah you're held to a higher standard because just simply because of that. Well, it, it's called professional, it's called professionalism. And so it, I don't care what position you work. You could be the, uh, you know, barista at Starbucks. You have to hold yourself to a higher expectation whenever you have a, a rude, mean white Karen that comes into right. your drive through demanding a insane order. <clears throat> uh, so it, there, there's a level of, you should always be professional in the workplace for sure. Um, but we're also talking about human beings, and that's why I'm saying but even like, even the they, media they, they don't have the care. Same rights. They don't care about they don't care about people dying. They don't care about cops. No, don't let me no, fool never. you. Yeah. Because here here's one from the AP press. You can see this crap. They did say you know hey this is what happened to the whatever. But there here's in, anyone once you start reading the narrative. What's the headline? You know I'm not going back. I'm going to lose my place where I'm at. I already did because I was freaking not paying attention. <laughs> um, so he is obviously you know drinking. Um, Three times see. the legal. Well, I'm limit. just going to go back up here because you asked me. Man who killed two Connecticut officers likely fueled by a prior interaction with police. Probably not likely. It probably it, was. No, it was. That. Yeah. You know, we watched the again what that video was, yeah. and you can see. So it talks about there's uh, several paragraphs, um, kind of like in in type. Obviously, not a video of what happened, kind of leading up to it and stuff like that. Um. Uh oh, this this I'm just, this is the face of concern right here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm I need to read this in con. It said I was embarrassed, and I told them that you know, since Katrina Bircher said you know, 
Nick, you're embarrassing your family. You're embarrassing our name. It said authorities concluded that there was not enough evidence to charge Nathan Brutcher, who was struck with an initial round of gunfire. I don't understand that. Anyway, it goes talks about that. I'm going to have to look at that a little bit deeper, take a deep dive in it. I'm sorry, people, for sitting here pausing and, and stuff like that. So it goes in to start talking about he had 14 guns and that these are now banned in Connecticut that he purchased. And so you start seeing the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. It now is blood alcohol content. And I'll bet a million bucks if I thumb through this. Give me a minute because I know how the press is, people. So let's, you can talk about that while I'm skimming through this, but here's my prediction. I need to go through this further. It will not take me long. That's the federal government's narrative. We talk about the drugs, the alcohol, the guns. Somewhere in here, I guarantee MT, there's a mental health issue. Well, they always want to highlight that when the narrative comes with guns. I guarantee it. Well, the, the problem of it is, is that they shy away from mental health. Uh, no, they like the, it when it comes situations. to guns because that enforces their, that backs up their narrative. If it's a you white know, person. to take them. Yeah, well, he's it, white. So. The, ultimately, what I'm getting at here is that, no, in, in most situations, they don't like the mental health argument because that kind of disproves that every law-abiding citizen is a, a threat to society. Uh, well, when they, I'm talking about from the federal side, when, they, yeah. when the president, whenever they start getting this mental health crisis that they don't want to address well, in America, by the way, is a, such a big deal. And we should have all these red flag laws and all these other laws for people <laughs> so we can just take their guns. And these people are deranged lunatics with ARs, you know, assault racist. rifles, they, you know. And they don't even need. And so that's that's what I'm saying. There's always a mental health it, issue they want to throw in behind it. It's a hate it. crime. I is told what, you. Yeah. Found it. It's a hate crime. Okay. So here's Associated Press. This is what it says. Friends and relatives said Brutcher had in recent months talked about suicide, describing a morbid side that found its way to stand found its way into a stand up comedy act that one friend called dark and tasteless. He told jokes about dead babies, suicide, and disabled persons. Report said. And then it goes on to say he was at a bar. I, I, I mean, I told you, I, I knew that it would be there somewhere because it's always there well, to sorry. try to play that. If that's true, you know, that's, yeah, that's what happens. So you got a guy that, unbeknownst to the cops, is Mentally basically unstable. freaking jacked up in the head, yeah. you know, and talking about dead babies and killing babies and all this other morbid stuff. Yeah. And, and so you kind of wonder... So the cop, what your defense is, you know, the cops never know what they're walking into. Yeah, they should probably take more discretion in this situation before they just walk up there and knock a grown man on his butt and treat him like a piece of crap. Next to that, those cops at some somehow, some way, shape, or form knew there was drugs or alcohol involved. So on top of doing that, somebody that's possibly mentally dis disabled, mentally handicapped, whatever you word you want to use there. Right. Um, on top of that, you have drugs or alcohol involved, which is known to escalate issues, and he just thinks it's okay to do this stuff. I mean, look, at the end of the day, yeah, every action has a reaction. Uh, it's just, it, to me, it's like there's no way, I feel like as a cop, you could possibly prepare yourself uh, factoring in everything that goes into a call like that, like the, the sense of urgency, et cetera, to, yeah. to come in. Well, that, that, that cop did no justice for himself in that department. Whether he's alive or not, I'm sorry if I'm talking ill dead. I don't really know that factually. Um, but this is a prime example. This is, this is something, in my opinion, you won't see global news. You will not see this as the headline of news because the thing of it is, if they push this agenda, guns, 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 they're going to have to say, look what that cop did. Leading up to the event. And yeah. now we've got and two sides that the government don't, you know, they don't want to deal with that. Well, and there and was so another... you, won't, you won't get the publicity like other shootings have in the past. You know, and there, to me, there was a kind of a, a little bit another angle to that, which is why did the cop decide to leave the scene and get back to his vehicle rather than just have the shootout right there with the guy in the bushes and potentially save his cop friend's lives? Uh, well, in my opinion, I, look, I, if I was him, I would have done the same exact thing. I definitely would have ran around the side of the building. I would have found cover because I just got shot too, and I want to assess the so situation. So the dude got shot. Let me get to because I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I'm understanding this. I'm answering it the way I'd like to answer it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say correctly. So, or how so this, plays this out. guy shot this cop. So he shoots three cops in under five seconds. Yeah. He has an AR-15 aimed at them from the bushes as they approach the front door of the house. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting to the, the point where this cop runs away. You, so you, the guy exits the house, and this man in the bushes starts shooting at the sure. police officers. He nails two of them. They fall to the ground. Okay. 
the third guy who's like kind of on this shaft or wall, whatever, uh, misses, gets brazed by a bullet. Yeah. And so he, instead of going towards the, the perpetrator, he goes around the house mm-hmm. back to his cop car where he takes the shot and ends up ending the man's life uh, with a single shot. It, so the, the question that a lot of people were asking online is, should he have stayed right there in the firefight? Because as he's going around the house, you can hear numerous gunshots going off. Well, you'd uh, have... That I'm assuming <clears throat> was the, the final bullets to end, for sure, those other cops' lives. Uh, and that, that's like the, the hardest part about the video, in my opinion, was the screams of the mom combined with the echoing shots of knowing that those two guys are done for. Well, it could be debated both ways, and I can see both sides. From a yeah. military perspective, you don't run from the fight. Yeah. You know, at least, at least I would say from the Marine Corps side. However, being Marine myself, dude opens fire, popping off 20, 30 rounds of sh- you know, at a yeah. time, not boom, there boom, with boom. a 9 yeah. millimeter Glock, I'm going to take cover. Yeah. Um, and then you go back into the military side. There's, you know, you need to get your comrades, your guys out of there, um, even under fire. You know, you look at any war past, you know, you comrades. see you see these things that happen and in heavy fire, they go in and get them out. Um, so it could be debated. And I think that just depends on your standpoint. Um, so without being there, it's really hard to make a, a fair statement to that. And I don't know that I'd want to say the cops a coward. Um, because I wasn't there. I don't know the, right. exactly how that completely played out. So there is two sides of that. Um, if what you say is accurate, how it happened, okay, two guys got knocked, he ran, basically ran around the house and shot him. That, that's a relatively short amount of time to def- you know, it was. defuse. Plus the two minutes. Um, to de-escalate the situation. I don't necessarily see an issue with that. And the guys are already down. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and Immediately. you know, now if there was five or six other and you run off, different story. Right. Um, Ooh, and they're still, point. they're still shooting and, yep. and they're in a firefight and, and, and you ran off. And yeah, that's yeah. a different yeah. story. Yep. But these two are already down. Um, you the last man standing. You know, yeah. And a lot of things go through your head and your mind. You know, you know, the thing of it is, I couldn't even actually factually say a lot of things go through your mind. A lot of things in the military, um, you, you do it out of instinct. Mm hmm. And it's one of those things you you deal with the situation. And a lot of times, and that's a matter of fact, not to get on a tangent about that, it's like a lot of times why guys don't have so much problem when they're in the military. It's after they get out because it's after you're out, after you've out of that situation, that's when you start processing it. Like, right. Man, Thinking I could have done that it. different. I could have done this. I could have done, you know, whatever. And, and that's when all this other stuff kicks in. So I would bet that that was just his instinct if – and just that he reacted without thinking because hey, bottom line of this, that's what you got to do. That's why you constantly yep, yep, train, 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 train. You react without, you know, without thinking and, and you train to act, you know, correctly. So I don't know. I don't know that I would fault him for that. So, you know? okay. Now uh, that that's a police officer trying to do his job effectively. And, you know, there's a lot of things about that shooting that is both terrible, but also like questionable. And, you know, we, we've kind of already been through that. Yeah. But, I, but I also feel like there's other topics in life where it's like it, it should be very black and white as far as what the law reads, et cetera, yeah. uh, which kind of leads me into my, my next story here. Which well, is, I'm not done with that one because the cop did everybody a favor. He saved a bunch of tax money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you people think I'm joking. No, that's, that's not a, a joke. thing. Yeah. That, that guy turned around and sued him. He'd have done this. He'd have done that. Put him into mental health. And here's what here's what would have happened, in my opinion, especially based off his crazy state of mind, is he'd have got he'd have got not cha- face murder charges. He'd go, well, he can't stay in trial because he's not mentally, you know. And he'd have, and he'd have just sat there yeah. and no justice is done. Yep. Now, you know, I'm not advocating go around killing people, but the cop saved a lot of taxpayers' money, and 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 justice in this situation, whether right or wrong, the cop did what. The dude pulled the trigger. That's the thing. The dude had the option not to, not to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, you the cop the cop was the judge and jury in this one. And, you know, again, you know, I'm sorry for the family, you know, but then again, you know, I mean, it's these I've, things get drug out in court and cost us freaking stupid amounts of money fighting nonsense that everybody knows. And even that family knows that. And I'm not trying to talk down the family. I don't know them, nothing about them. But even if it were mine, we all know at the end of the day that it was wrong. 
you know, yes, your it was your son, it was your you know your, your the brother, dad or whatever. Brother. I mean, I get that aspect of it, but it, it doesn't matter if you have any brain on your shoulder. You know, like it was wrong. Well, and and that's what kind of made that video hard to watch too was hearing his mom screaming and crying the way that she did because you could tell that was from anguish, like. What the heck did you do, man? Mm-hmm. You've thrown away your life. Yeah, but that you know that, um, those types of squills and whines and hollering, bellowing, whatever you want to call it, they're like that all the time. And the thing of it is, we're doing it to the government, the president of the United States, right now, and they don't care. Well, it's just it, it's just a silent. They don't necessarily get to hear it, you know. And this this crap happens on the streets all the time. But the problem of it is, is because we're, it, what are we focusing on as America? And, you know, like two things come to my mind immediately, and one of those being LGBTQ uh, activists in California trying to oppose a bill that literally would make it a felony to purchase children for sex. And you have people that are actively... They're trying to what? So California is trying to pass a bill that makes it a felony to purchase children for sex. The sex trafficking. I mean, there already is a freaking law. Well, they're they're making sure it's on the books twice. The point of it being, though, is that you have individuals who are opposed to making purchasing children for sex a crime because it disproportionately affects members of the LGBTQ people and also black and brown people, allegedly. How in the heck does that even come about? Like a disproportionate... Oh, because here's why. Let me break this down very simple. Uh, at the end of the day, who's the group most likely to try and groom your children? Well, it's, it's not the LGBTQ. No, it is. Well, that's, well, that, that's not no, not that's, in this world. No, no, but it is. That's the, that's the problem. I, you, it, it I'm is being smart world. here. I mean, because you hear <laughs> I, this freaking yeah. argument all the time. But that's that's, that's the, the go-to. That's, we, that's, how many LGBTQ drag queens, whatever, have you ever seen? We're not doing that. We just yeah. want to. We just want to get them alone in a public library. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, alone in the back of a van. Uh, the, Here's the, the point, candy, uh, little kids. The, Come the, in here. The point of it being here is that this is how insane people have gotten in society uh, that rather than acknowledge that, yes, creeps are going to enter into this community because you accept all of them, and as a result, you're going to see kids get trafficked. You're mm-hmm. going to see kids get sexually abused by these adults. Why is that? It's a perpetuation. Well, this is this of, whole thing. I just even besides the you know, premise it, of what and everything behind it, it's stupid. These things are law. Sex traffic is one of the biggest problems in the United States. We talked about this, you know, just not too long ago about you know this the slave trade. But if it's you know, just one, it, it doesn't matter. You know, they need to squash this kid. crap. And the thing of it is, I don't know that they can squash it completely. However, they can they can get this thing under control. What am I hearing? Yeah, somebody wants to mow lawn. I'm trying to record. Sounds like a lawnmower. (laughs) Um, uh, Hopefully, y'all can't hear that. But anyway, (laughs) this slave trade, you know, we're not talking sex trade. Slave trade, you know, that's why I was talking about this in Juneteenth. You know, I was like, this is just a cover, like make all make all the black people feel good. Like, oh, let's give them a holiday because this is the day slavery ended. Slavery hasn't ended in the United States. I'm gonna say the same thing I said before. It is worse now in the United States than it ever has been. The only difference is then. We guess to some degree it was a legal slave trade. Now it's illegal. It's sex trafficking, illegal little kids, but you know, and and these things. It's it's ridiculous. It, but it is legal though. That's the thing is you can you can say that it's illegal on the on the books for sure. But who's being prosecuted for it? And we don't have to look any further than no, they Jeffrey don't. Epstein's they Epstein's client list. Well, the th- they don't do anything no, about sex this trafficking. Stuff. Child trafficking is a very real problem that goes on in the United States mm-hmm. and globally that does not get prosecuted because the people who are doing it are in the top positions of power in society. The, there's That's truth to that, to. but the thing of it is when these things come down, you really, I mean, I do agree there's people of power and position and stuff like that, but what sex trafficking comes down to, drugs come down to, immigration comes down to, is we don't want to do anything because it makes us uncomfortable. And I'm not talking about uncomfortable. It makes it's it's a little bit of an inconvenience. Here, let me explain. If you go to Walmart, you go to or wherever you groceries. I just use Walmart. That's the first thing I say. Whatever. And you're there for five minutes, and there's somebody up there that's just having to count the pennies. They're really realistically, when you break that down, they're taking an extra minute or two. But it's an inconvenience. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you how to stop most. No, I did not say all. Not all. A lot. Most of the trafficking, sex trafficking, 
drug trafficking, trafficking, the kidna- you know, it's all this crap. Immigrants, here's how you do it. At the borders, you shut the dang things completely down to, you, even if there's 10 lanes, whatever. And there's a dog at every one of them. And you search. You know, I'm not telling you physically search, but you put a dog on every vehicle that comes across the border. Every one. You know why they don't want to do that? It's, an, it's, it's a little bit of yeah, an inconvenience. Because you're going to have to wait in line. Yeah. But waiting in line, ain't, ain't that a good trade off to say, hey, if it stops kids from getting, you know, beat, slave trade, molested, raped, you know, all this illegal crap? It's not worth right. it. No, and that's the thing. What America it's not worth it. It's too much of an inconvenience in the way. And it's not hard. You cross the border just like I was bashing the cop. Like, you know, you're a cop. If you don't like it, don't be a cop. Well, what I'm not the exact same what I'm saying here, if you don't like it, then don't go across the dang border. Because that's what it is. The standard border should be, hey, if you cross, it's gonna take you five, six out, whatever to get back. And so that's the price. If you're going across, that's what you're gonna do. So the the real question becomes then is why are most Americans okay with human and sex trafficking rather than just waiting an extra hour or five hours at the border to get back through to ensure that those children, that the drugs aren't coming into the country, that illegal immigrants Simple. aren't flooding the border? I can guarantee if I read this post about that? this cop, if I read this cop post about this, I guarantee you, give me two articles and I'll see it in there. It's such a quiet little neighborhood. That doesn't happen here. What I'm saying by that statement is they're stupid, and it hasn't happened to them. They turn a blind eye like it doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and there is freaking crazies. It doesn't matter if you're in a rich neighborhood, if you're in a white neighborhood, black neighborhood, Hispanic neighborhood, poor neighborhood, there's crazy people. Well, I heard that Bartlesville, Oklahoma, is actually <clears throat> a very good spot for like sex trafficking and stuff like that, uh, purely because there's a highway that runs all the way through the town. And if you're a trafficker, that is the ideal situation, that anywhere you go in a public place, I can immediately get back on the highway and get well, out of Well, the Dodge. thing of it is, too, is you get across state lines in less than 10 minutes. And that's, that's at a aspect. normal. Yeah. That's a normal driving. Yep, yeah, yep. You know? It, 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 it's, the, what's intense about that is because you're talking about people being unaware, et cetera. Um, you know, it wasn't until I really started talking to my wife about it and all the, the female Facebook pages she's on uh, where the women in this town are definitely communicating about uh, uh, like potential traffickers and stuff like that, trying to take them mm-hmm. uh, and, and those kinds of situations. But ultimately, as a general public in this town, no, no one really knows because it's, that it's like this is a pop in place. You see that, that in Bartersville, Dewey. You know, these Copan, these surrounding areas, Ramona, Oshalita, it's oh, such a quiet community. Oh and then something happens, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't believe that. It's such – I couldn't believe this happened. You know, it, they, they, they think these things won't happen to them. And when they do, then everybody wants to start a little thing and, and get a Facebook page going and some activist rights group going and protest it and, and get pissed off at the government. They ain't going to do nothing about it. The government – I'm going to tell you, people in the United States – the government is going to do nothing about this. They don't care. If they cared, they would they would have already acted by now. This is not some new thing that just popped up in 2023 and 24. They don't care. Uh, I mean, because really, what does this come down to? It comes down to uh, weak ideologies. And so, like, one of those could be, oh, this is a, a very safe neighborhood, a very safe place to live. And, you know, I personally have a story of where I thought that exact thing only to that night have my vehicle broken into mm-hmm. after I, I say the words of, oh, we live on the good side of town. And yeah. that night my car gets broken into. Irony and for and, sure. and, and, and who found the guy? Uh, who found the guy? We did. Yeah, exactly, because yeah, the cops could yeah. do the freaking job. I know, it was insane. Yeah. Uh, but that's also an idiot, though, for coming back to the, <clears throat> to the scene of but, crime. But, hey, it is a proven uh, thing that cop, you know, that thieves will usually come back. Yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. sure enough, this dummy did. Yeah, the next day. It and lucky insane. I didn't freaking, yeah. like, put shoot 83 rounds in him, you know. Like, yeah. You can't, <laughs> oh you know, that's the difference between a crazy person and someone that's sane. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. You know, I, like, but that's that, the difference, you know, you, you think it. But let's get into that, though. So... Uh, there, there's a ton of people in America that have weak ideologies. And, you know, I, I feel that way for a lot of the straight biological men, women uh, that support the LGBTQ movement. And the reason why I say that is because uh, there was a man who 
long story short, went to a pride parade and was asking biological women uh, what the what their transition was like. And obviously they were either confused or angered uh, by his question in which they profusely denied being a trans woman and that they were born biologically a female. And the, the issue that I ultimately have with that is that, number one, is that not transphobic in today's world where you're making a clear distinction between a biological female and a man who's transitioned to call himself a woman? Do, do you see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. there's that. But then there's also, <clears throat> why the hell are you supporting a group of people that you clearly do not identify with? Is that not a double standard? Well, people do it all the time because it's a Facebook phenomenon. <laughs> Social media. Yeah. You know, we got facilitators of sex trafficking and pedophile rings and in internet. It's proven people. Yeah, I know. You it's won't you don't hear about that much, but it's out there. It's called Instagram. Man, <laughs> that thing, you know, we've talked about this so many times, you know, and I'll give you the, the the long version is I don't care. And I'll give you the other side of the version. We don't care. And as the other version, most generally, people don't care. <laughs> Okay, if you ain't figured it out, I don't care yeah. because it's it's so redundant. It's just in your face, you know, and you stupid pronouns and crap, and it's just all over the place. I mean, I was watching a c cartoon the other day. I mean, you were there, uh, and I yeah, was like, I, I mean, I'm uh -huh. watching it. This comes across, and I'm like, what the? I mean, I was yeah, like, robots identifying yeah. as they them is yeah. just it's ridiculous. Transformers, ass. yeah, it's yeah. a new Transformers thing. Out, you know, it's Earth ridiculous. Spark. It's fantastic. You should definitely. And, like I mean, I could, and it wasn't. It. And it was not like some little thing like Disney does, where it was like hidden in subliminal messaging. No, yeah. it was just like oh, this. You know, she refers they yeah. them yeah. pronoun. I mean, <laughs> specifically, it was like <laughs> they go by they them pronouns. It was not uh, hidden. It was black and white. You know, and this is the crap that we we put. In front of our kids, you know, I, I would have never guessed it in a million years. And Transformers, I mean, that is, you know, people's going to, here comes a sexist Joe. Here it comes. I'm telling you, if you got sensitive ears, shut them off. But Transformers is men, boys. Those are not Barbie dolls. Yeah, I know. These are, you know. Yeah, you boy know, toys. Yeah, you know, boy toys. Be very careful <laughs> that. This generation, too. But, yeah, sure, sure. You know, th these were things that. You know the masculinity side, yeah, and they're it taking it and shrinking it down to to crap. To Megatron is like a good guy, and I'm like, make that make sense. He's it's, always been the villain. Yeah, it's I that's what they've shrunk this down to. But that's society. They get the you know they can play that stuff and like, oh well, we can cater to we can cater to the LGBT community. We we give them two seconds of the right verbiage, and hey, we support them now. See, but you know? here's the thing. So number one, I would say uh, if you're unaware what the LGBTQ movement has become is state-sanctioned religion. Uh, make no mistake about it. Whenever the federal government and state governments are all acting as one, and then they also get the media to go along with it to push this narrative that allegedly all women are women until you start talking to biological women who allegedly support yeah. the cause in which they make it abundantly clear there's a big difference between a biological woman and a trans woman. Well, this now, is that, a that's one angle of it, but my the question really becomes is, what, why, why hasn't America stood up to that? And in the same way, uh, are you familiar with the group called Patriot Front? No. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of the Proud Boys? W or the, the gay ones? <laughs> no, I know what you're, ta I know what you're talking yeah, about. Okay, yes. so uh, the, the Proud Boys have been labeled a, and I'm sure they are, a very racist, white-dominated uh, group. And so insert the federal government organization called Patriot Front. And the reason why I call it a federal government organization is because I've never seen a group in my entire life who all wear the same shirt, all wear khaki pants, all have masks and hats, and sunglasses on to conceal their faces mm -hmm. versus the difference. So like there's that organization, <clears throat> Patriot Front, versus the Proud Boys who no masks, all, all of them are dressed up in a different outfit, something Trump related probably. But the point of it being is that you have one person who's saying, here's who I am, here's the business I stand on, and here's what we represent versus a alleged neo-Nazi group called Patriot Front who conceals their faces and also is in uniform coming out of U-Haul trucks at these massive protests. Well, because so the, the question becomes is, is this a, a federal organization designed to incite violence and protest? I mean, 
I believe that that's kind of been fact, you know, factually, but somewhat flirted with and hinted at and even proven, but nobody wants to talk about it. The thing of it is, we go back, let's go back really. You get into sex trafficking. Why they don't talk about it? Because if they did, there'd be a lot of politicians in prison. Yep. That's why we don't want to, that's why we don't rock that boat. Okay. You get into these other ones. Are they part of this or part of that? Well, there's a reason they're hiding, reason they're hiding. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if it's the most innocent person in the world. And I don't care if it's the worst terrorist in the world. If you are going to hide behind a mask, you shouldn't be heard. Period. And, and you, you take away attention. from you you take away from your cred, not even so much credibility, but if you're so cowardly, see there's a key word hinge on that to even show your face. Well, what good? How really? How good your cause is if you can't even show your face for it and stand up for it? You have to do it behind a mask. You have to do it behind social media and all these other things. It shouldn't even be heard in my opinion, but we can't squash these things because if we did, let me get back. Well, no, I think it's the thing. It, that particular subject, if we did, I think, and we started getting down to the nut cutting on it, down to the bottom of it and start figuring these things out again, even in this one, are they funding these riots and backing them and involved in them, provoking them? I think what you'll find out is there's going to be some politicians going to prison. Well, uh, you don't have to look any further than January 6th to know that the federal government will use FBI informants, et cetera, Mm -hmm. insert them into these protests and allow them to allegedly gather information and witness a a crime. Uh, But then you go back and you watch footage and you find out that the very people instigating the crimes that allegedly took place uh, are all the ones who don't get arrested. Mm-hmm. And so what does that tell you? They're probably not a citizen of the United States. They're probably a federal employee who is put there yeah. to do those things. CI. Uh, so at the end of the day, and also I, I would just like to bring up, look at Martin Luther King Jr. and what they tried doing to him and separating his civil rights movement. Uh, and then what they end up having to do because he was so undivisive, they have to kill the man. Uh, now, I'm not saying that that's going to take place here, and I, I hope not. But at the end of the day, to me, it, it kind of screams where we're at in society of how deep the rabbit hole goes, how far media and the government will get in bed with each other to try and convince you that one party's bad and one party's good. Well, and I'm, I'm not saying either party's <clears throat> good, because at the end of the day, they're both corrupt up to their gills, uh, and neither one of them truly care about the American public. That's my opinion. But, you know, and I, I feel like you don't even have to really look much further than diversity, equity, inclusion. And why, why would I bring that up after talking about Proud Boys and uh, neo-Nazis? Well, at the end of the day, diversity, equity, inclusion has done a lot to destroy uh, what I would say meritocracy. As in, you may not have been born in the best set of circumstances, but your character and your skill level rises above the fold, and therefore we're going to give you an opportunity to succeed. Uh, and we've decided to change that into, well, what's the color of your skin, and what has the government done to oppress you? And if you can check all those boxes, then, yeah, you get into law school, medical school, Well, et they're getting away from and, some of that. Well, but no, they're not, though, because there's an, an Indian man who has proven just how bad DEI is by getting accepted into medical school with 3.1 GPA after he identifies as a black person. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dang, Devin, how does an Indian guy look like a black person? I'll tell you how. He shaves his head bald, removes his eyebrows, and he does look black. Well, now, I mean, the, now the, the thing of it, they're, but is see, it, they they did away with this crap with the colleges and using that for entry and stuff like that. But that's the didn't. that's bottom line. The college discretion trying to make something look good. As much as I hate to say it, but hey, that's what it is. Because but like it on the flip side, good. well, it depends. It, it on the, by the beholder, it does. It just depends. Yeah, you know, on the situation. It's, My daughter wants racism. to go to law school, and they told her, don't even apply if you ain't got at least a three point eight GPA because you, you ain't getting in. You know, allegedly, and so, well, no, I believe I believe that school meant exactly what they said. If you're white, but on the same hand, well, they don't know that she's white, black, green, or anything in between. Whenever Maybe. she made the fault call, yeah. but the thing of it is, what I'm getting at is there is schools that want more of of a certain race to to look better, and there's schools down here in the south they don't care, yeah. they do not care. You know, and that's what's thing about here in Oklahoma. It ain't a. They don't care about Indian people. They don't care about black people. What they cater to here is Asians, which is 
really screwed up. <laughs> I mean, they do. Go to two of the major universities in Oklahoma, and I guarantee to you, you will see more Asian favoritism than you will any other race. Now, I understand there's white people and there's black people, and there's a lot of them. But there's a hell of a lot of Asians, too, and there ain't huh. sure no Indians running around there. That sounds so racist. That was not yeah. meant to be that way, so don't take it yeah. that way. You <laughs> know, like, but, and I'm not talking about natives. India, yeah, 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 Native Americans. Right. I'm talking about Indians from, you know, so from wherever. And I'm not going to isolate it to one place, and I get in trouble for that, too. By the way, but I, this, I saw... This not, it's not a prominent thing here. I saw, Maybe in other colleges, but... <laughs> I saw this joke... That was something along the lines of you can never lie to an Indian woman because the red dot on her head is always recording. Well, it may be true. And I thought that was we super funny. Uh, Maybe a chip. Because I don't know why, you know, the old saying, women never forget. And then inserting that in there just cracked me up. Man, women super forget racist, stuff all but, the time. You know, they, it depends. It's like a selective forgetfulness for sure. Uh, yeah, but here we are in this diversity, equity, inclusion conversation, and this is a totally random thing that I, I kind of feel like I've been seeing on the internet a little bit more recently, uh, which is there's this like kind of trend going on of white people bashing black people, saying that basically, in general, all black people are lazy and do not contribute to society that they live in. And their reference is basically, hey, Africans came from Africa where they have mud huts still to this day, uh, yet they mm, come over here. There's truth to that. And but they also have them in Iraq, too, because I've been there. Well, uh, the point of it being is just like basically, hey, there's no innovation. There's nothing blah, blah, blah going on, which I think is pretty false because there's definitely a lot of smart black people out there. But the, the overall general consensus is that... Uh, they're lazy, they don't contribute to society, and you kind of have to push them along to get them to actually do things. Yeah. So it's true. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not saying true. No, I gotta I, be careful. I I know, it's not true. Yeah. It's true that yes, that is I, what is being said. So like uh the the thing for me, what what bothers me with it is that number one, it's too much of like a overarching stereotype because I would hate uh, if any other group or race decided to lump every white person into a crazy white Karen, you know what I mean? Uh, like, no, I'm not that way, but I see videos all the time of well, a, a crazy white lady doing stupid there's stuff. There's statistics so, that actually kind of, that they would make you believe, le- back that claim up. I know, well, and that, but now we get a little bit deeper into it, which is, uh, is this because of perception, which is, Year after year, we're told that black people aren't educated enough to uh, to vote or they, they don't have enough money to go out and get a, a driver's license to be able mm-hmm. to register to vote. And in my opinion, that's all extremely racist and makes black people look bad. Well, yeah. You, you, you yeah how like stupid a, can you be say, to sit a, there and say, like, there's a governor. you can't vote because you're black and well, you're not educated enough? Man, I can tell you, you're better than the person that goes there and just says, oh, Democrat, Straight yeah. line vote. No, the black guy can do better than that. Uh, and I'm just saying, I'm not not discrediting that, but like, no, you can't use that excuse because there's dumb voters out there across it, the board. To take it one step further, you literally had the governor of New York. Uh, I can't even think of her first name, but something like Hoshel, where she literally comes out and says that black kids do not know what computers are. And she said that this year in 2024. And that, that really blew me away because I'm like, how dumb are you, lady, that you think any kid in America doesn't know what a computer is as if they don't go to a public school where you pay to have a a Google Chromebook inserted into the classroom where going to this public school, any kid who has parents that pay half their bills Mm -hmm. has a cell phone in their pocket. So at at some point you're going to be like, Oh, the cell phone is like a computer. A computer can access the internet. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, here's my conclusion. It's so racist. I'm going to solve this race issue once and for all. I'm going to tell you why. Right now, the government wants us segregated, separated. Okay, if black people and white people could get along to the degree that we all would like, it would overthrow the government. Picture this: you got a bunch of people from the south, and because I'm talking, and I'm saying the, no, I'm going to say the people that matter because I don't give a crap what your East Coast and West Coast opinion is. You know, I don't because it's crap. It's it's garbage, and that's what usually dictates everything else. If you took the average 
white guy in the southern states, and probably I don't know what the statistics are. I'm sure some I know they have this. You know, we've got a bunch of guns willing to stand up for their rights and fight and fight and you know whatever. And then you take the people out of the hood. Yeah. Maybe they can't legally own them because that's stere- that's people with stereotype. Well, they can't legally own them. St. Louis, Baltimore. And, but however, they ain't afraid to kill people. Yeah, yeah, clearly. <laughs> and we all yeah. got along. That'd be scary. Yeah. For the government. You're darn right it would. That's why they want us. I'm not saying that's the only reason. What, what would the but, message be at that point? Like, if I'm the government. means you can't I, stop us. And, like, I see that black people and white people are united. LGBTQ mm-hmm. is no longer an issue. Uh, gun control isn't a thing because we all understand no matter what you do, criminals will get yeah. guns. What's going to happen? What when, happens? We'll, we'll just keep it down to what I said. You get the black people and white people, and they get along, you know, majority. You're never going to 100% cohesive, yeah. cohesive. But you get the majority of it. Then the president, I'm going to do more for the black people. The black people are going to be like, shut up. We get along just fine without you. Mm. We get along just fine without you, man. My white brother down the road, that's, that's, that's the language you're going to hear. We get along just fine. I don't need you, you. I don't need you turning back the hands of time. A hundred years, fifty years. We're doing just fine. Keep your politics out of this crap. That's what's going to happen. And the government's going to keep trying to push their agenda. And you're going to have a. a you know, it's going to hit the fan. For lack of better words. You think about that logically for a minute, people. If black people and white people could get along, because I'm telling you, the government supports this agenda. They support the segregation. Yeah. It's proven. Quit, quit with this black on black, black on white, black, you know, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. and I don't even get, you know, segregation. I'm telling you, they like segregation within your own race. I mean, how much do you see about, how much articles do you see about, well, you know, the white people rob the black white people. Or the white people, man, they turn, you know, you always hear the negative crap about, well, the black people are more likely to kill black people. Our black people, man, they're more likely to populate the jails. You don't hear that type of talk about the white people. Or they kill more babies. They, they want the black people even segregated within their self, their own race. Yeah. Yep. And it's crap. That's how, this is, well, they, this is they coming call from them, our government. They call them coons. That, that's the craziest part. It's to racist. Me. It's, the, it's the craziest thing in the world to see one black person be racist towards another black person. Because one of those black people say, you know what, rather than feel oppressed and like the government and every white person is out to get me, I'm going to rise above the fold and I'm going to hold myself to the highest standard, perform at a high level uh, in my job, career, etc. And they they get called a coon by other people in the black community. And I'll, I'll never understand that because you're literally tearing another man down using in my opinion, a racial slur, mm-hmm. and you want to try and, and talk about equality to me. It's like fix yourself before you, yeah. you ever yeah, try to I mean, there's bibli- some biblical America. reference there, too, amongst other things. You know, that's not the topic today. But all I'm saying, that's why they want this, that's why they want this segregation still in play, because it would be bad for politics. It would be bad for society. I mean, bad in, you know, it sounds bad, but bad in a good way, yep. because it'd be like, no, 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 we're just fine. Yep. Just keep your freaking nose out of this stuff. And if some president gets up there, I'm going to do this for the black people. Like, no, you ain't. We don't need you. And then you ain't going to get no votes. The only it would th- keep it for what it should be is on everybody. The, the only thing that's actually going to help Americans is lowering taxes. <clears throat> Eliminate income tax, man. Just eliminate it. Get mm. rid of it. And the reason why I say that is because I, I don't think we need to have the world's largest military. I don't think we need to have... Uh, you know, this kind of police state of what it's turning into. I don't think we need to have as many federal agencies uh, as what we do. I would love to see the FBI get defunded. I would love to see the ATF get defunded. I would love to see the CIA get defunded. And why is that? It's not because I don't want America to be secure. It's because I've seen what they do with the money. And mm-hmm. all they do is corrupt more well, politicians. They can't even pass an audit. And yeah, I mean that's proven, yeah. people. Well, I California mean, like, can't either with their homeless crisis. They yeah. they lost billions of dollars. Imagine that. Oh, we lost it. We don't know what happened to billions of dollars of taxpayers' money. Yeah, do your taxes and tell them you lost a thousand. See yeah, what happens. Yeah, and that that's what I'm getting at. Is like so what? Because it's a state, we just don't hold them accountable. Yeah. It's like no, you quit giving that person money because they clearly don't know how to handle it. Quit letting them. Vote. Now the. The hard part here is like we're, we're talking about caring. And in today's world, what do people ultimately care about? It's sensationalism. And I, I feel like there's no clearer example than this up and coming rap artist named Sketch. Uh, he's a, Says it all. He's a white guy that, in my opinion, I don't know, but kind of looks know like he's he white? Has, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> he's definitely white. Okay. But I don't know. 
he kind of looks like he has like Down syndrome or like autism, maybe. You know, like he, like I'm just gonna say, he doesn't look put together. I'll just say it like that. But anywho, there's uh, this super viral story going around uh, because you know how people are when they don't while have time on the you're talking, what was his name? His his artist this name is Sketch. Is Sketch. <clears throat> okay. Um, Proceed. So this man gets outed by fans or probably haters for having an old OnlyFans account from years ago in which he did... He had an OnlyFans? He, I'm looking at the dude. There yeah. Worth, no, no sight to see It's there. insane, dude. It's insane. But he had one. I'm sure it's a kink for, for whoever was uh, subscribing to that account, but whatever. I, it's OnlyFans. Uh, the point of it being, though, is like how sad this is, is that we're going to troll a man and tear him down because of his previous sexual preference, number one, but also number two... Why not? What well, and the, well, the reason why I say that is because what does it matter? Why can't we do that? What does it matter? I'm going somewhere with that question. So why that, can't we do it? Why is that not okay? Because the LGBT okay. community does that um, to straight people all the time. No, at the the reason why I say no, it no, no, no. Let's let's so answer it, the question. Do they or do they not do that? They no, tear they, us they down for being do. straight. Yeah. So why can't I do that to them? Because I mean, it's not day, right. Yeah. I mean, we can certainly say it's not right. Yeah. You know, the tone should see that I'm being it's smart, Ellie. Be like. They stay here and do it to us, and they expect it not to happen to them. Guess what? You live in America. The real issue here is is not about his sexuality. It's about hiding it. And and that's kind of where the internet got really upset with this man, is that he did try hiding it. Mad that, streamer sketch responds to claims he was a gay OnlyFans model. And he did. He that admitted one? it. He admitted <laughs> who it. Who cares? Straight up. Now, yeah, that's my thing. It's like, who cares? But on the other hand, the reason why we care is because you denied it so much. And you're like, nah, man, ain't me. And then you come out and say, yeah, that's yeah, It's like that's the guy me. in the White House that got caught. Yeah. <laughs> With me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah. no, that tattoo well, on your butt. No, that's you. Yeah, we'll never know. Um, <laughs> but the, it's just crazy to me because, like, here we are. You know, uh, let's just roll it back a few weeks and talk about the hawk to a girl. You know, like, how, how is it that we'll focus so much time and attention on these viral moments on the Internet but pay no mind to the the real problems that that face America, such as the divisiveness between white and black people Mm -hmm. that the government and media push out uh, against us. We would rather be outraged and upset with a gay, potentially autistic, Down syndrome man who can rap really well, by the way. I don't know. Well, you clearly haven't seen any of his raps. But they're kind of fire. I liked him. I mean, look, but I'm also weird. Uh, well, it's know, the I same answer. I would subscribe. The same answer I gave you about other things. People don't care. They don't pay attention. Just like I said with the sex trafficking, with the drugs or shootings in their neighborhood. It, well, it didn't really directly affect me. They don't see the immediate consequences on them at the moment. And they don't care. And yeah. the thing of it is, what they do is just like whenever Biden became president. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after it starts happening, it's like, oh, my gosh. They don't really complain about it until they start seeing the effects it put upon them. And so that's why a lot of this stuff is that people are just ignorant. In social media, I say media, but social media, um, all the stuff to distract us from reality. You know, you look at all the stuff going around, and relatively, even on social media, the presidential election is still kind of hush. I mean, there's a, there's stuff going around, but yeah. you look at other stuff, that in retrospect, and not in retrospect, but in comparison, it's it's really being hushed. Well, in some ways, I I would disagree with you because after the debate, I feel like I've seen a a complete 180 on the media's front to basically now dissuade the public from voting for Joe Biden. I'm talking about media. I'm talking about social Uh, media, the thing that distracts people every day. But that's what I'm Fox 23 News and AP and CBS don't do that. uh, The only thing I, I would push back on you a little bit on is saying that it depends on what platform you're on. Because some platforms, number one, any kind of political speech gets immediately downgraded in the algorithms. And I'm not saying that's such a bad thing. But at the end of the day, so if you're willing to go that far and just say, hey, anything political we're, we're not going to put in front of everyone, okay, that's one thing. But now you take it a step further and you'll publish more about this one person and publish more negative things about the other. And that's where bias starts to have a, an effect. And that's why companies like Google uh, should be held accountable for how they handle search results during election time frames. Because I'm sorry, you type in Hunter Biden laptop story, it should pull up the Hunter Biden laptop story, not 
well, 51 agents have debunked the Hunter Biden laptop story. That's not what I'm looking for. I typed in Hunter Biden laptop. Do you see what I'm saying? Debunking buying guns and having drugs. So the the (laughs) point of it being here is that uh, we we have a lot of social media companies, which in my opinion is no different than the media because the media utilizes those companies to broadcast their information because they're on a dying network. And that, you know, that's kind of an aside. So the, the point of it being here is that we're, we are most certainly, when we're talking about media, talking about social media. And so the, the ultimate issue or dilemma that I have is that we're, we're focusing on the wrong issues here. So I personally don't have an issue with a rap artist who is gay, was previously gay, had an OnlyFans account, never had an OnlyFans account. To me, that doesn't matter. I, I want to know the name. It does bother me on Jeffrey Epstein's client list. You know, it, well, like I, I, I mean, in, in comparison, yeah, but it many, does bother me because at, at the premise of being gay and what you do on your spare time, I don't care. But the problem of it is that doesn't stay that way. Yeah. They use it as a front to say to when you're uh, not to target children. That's all I'm saying. But it is. they use that to say, look at me, I'm gay. That's where I have a problem with it. I don't care that you're gay. I don't care. But you're getting up there and say, oh, I'm gay. This, you know, and you're like flaunting it in our face. It again, like a lot of the LGBTQ, like most people don't care that there's LGBT. We don't care there's gay people. Nope. We don't. It's you're just shoving it up on us and you have to make it a point. Like what if I get on the point and say, hey, by the way, everybody, I'm straight. Just so we get that out there, just like you do with your stupid pronouns. <laughs> like, hey, just so we're clear, I'm straight. I don't, I don't do this. I don't do that. You'd be like, and, and I guarantee you, they would be like, you really have to say that? Like, do you really feel yeah. like you need to do that? But yes, there's actually multi-billion dollar corporations, right? And even in their email list, I know, you have to have the, they, them stupid pronouns. That's stupid. He, him. You know, just keep your she, freaking her. sex life. Yeah. You're, you know, keep your dick out of the business. Yeah. That's what it is. Keep yeah. your sex life to yourself. Whatever you do behind closed doors, just just like, you know, if somebody, you know, marijuana is a big topic, you know, there's a lot of employers that say, you know, you pop on a piss test, kind of like whatever. If you come up, if you show up to work high, you're getting fired. Yep. You yep. know, what big you do difference. at home, smoke your weed, yep. drink your beer, but you show up high, you're going to have, you're not going to have a job. Yeah, there's consequences. You drive, you drive drunk. There's nothing wrong with being drunk, but you drive drunk. There's consequences. It's the same thing here. Go do what you want to do in your bedroom, but don't make it everybody else's issue. You know, and I, I do see what you're saying, and, and, and in some ways I, I kind of agree with you on the premise of uh, not making uh, your issue other people's issues. But look, at the end of the day, he was exposed. You know, I, I, I don't know how much he Well, he I'm not saying done. he brought it up. Somebody uh, else called him on the carpet with it, but mark my words, and I hope I'm wrong. I'll bet he's going to use this to his advantage. I honestly can't say that I blame the kid because it's going to be money, Yep. but... You know, then they're going to get on there. Well, I'm autistic too. If that's what you're saying, he'll use that as a ploy and take advantage of the word autistic to everybody else, just like people do with cancer. I have cancer, you know, and then they yeah. get GoFundMe and all this other crap. You know, it's it's just old. You know, if you're such a good singer, stand behind your vocals. That's it. You know, like that's that's it. Don't you don't have to get on there and try to get support because they're gay. Because straight people, gay people like you because you sing good. That's that's why. That that not that because is, what you can suck good. It's that, just that's what it is. That that should be the 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 main takeaway here is that at the end of the day, talent trumps all. Uh, no one cares what you suck when you suck it, uh, as long as on stage you're balling out of control. And you know, for for me, I'm not saying that like because now we get into the conversation of like, well, is R. Kelly a bad man? You know, for what he was doing to. Miners and everything else. Who's R. Kelly? You know, I know. I was about to be like, no (laughs) way. Uh, But, you know, you you look at a case like that where his music is beyond popular. It's kind of classic, timeless in Mm -hmm. in some ways, some respects. But yet you look at the actual man himself and you're like, oh, this is not the kind of individual I want to be a role model for my children. Yeah, but they're all this. It's the same thing over and over repeated. They're only, they're never going to do anything. What's the fool that just got, not too long ago, we talked about in the podcast, his house got raided. And it was at Kanye. P. Diddy. P. Diddy, yeah, Yeah. whatever, same, whatever. (laughs) You know, his, his house gets raided. When's the last time you've heard anything about that? Well, you don't because, do it because they try to cover. It's legal. Not, say cover yeah, it. It's legal. Uh, no, it's not it, legal. You know. Well, think about it like this: like if I'm the prosecutor for that case, you can't come out on. They can in some cases, and they definitely have. So I'm, I won't say every time, but in general, you do not give up your hand 
to the defense. Well, no, I get that. Media. But if there's something out there, you know, it's even just like these school shootings we've talked about. Where's but the they, manifesto? Well, it's taken like a year. But they will do And then it's just a little bitty tiny that, piece. They won't give the whole thing because it's going to damage the LGBT well, community. We're, we're in such a, a short time span as far as like people's attention and what they're able to remember and everything else. So if I'm the prosecutor, even if I did have a great media plan in place, I'm waiting until a month out from trial before I ever start... Well, they'll put, gag or, they'll put orders in place to stop certain things, you know. Well, you can't stop a leak, you know, and that's the, the thing. That's the, that's well, the, the new way uh, of how hit jobs are done. It, it's no longer so-and-so said. It's a source close to the family. Well, yeah, it's a government it's thing. A, it's like, oh, the whistleblower yeah, said this. Uh, a federal employee made this statement. It's like, okay, well, who's the source? And obviously, you know, I understand in some cases, as a journalist, you can't give up the source, but we're also talking about don't every time. Because you could make it up. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm getting at. That's like what the government and does. That's what I just said. Well, the whistleblower, who? Yeah. Well, whistleblower. you had, you had yeah, they don't 51 give names all the time. people sign off, and these are intelligence officers slash higher ups. They're not intelligent. Who, clearly not, but they, they were intelligent enough to sign off on a piece of paper leading up to an election to divert attention away from the real news. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm getting at here is that, you know, ultimately just because they work for an organization doesn't give them that, that credibility clearly, uh, it has to come from the heart. And that's where being true to yourself, whether you're gay or not comes into effect. And I personally feel like that if I was him in the situation, you know, I blow up on the internet and then people start digging into me and find out that I had a, you know, a, a nasty account or whatever. Um, just take it on the chin like he did. Like he just owned it. Yeah. Hey, I was down bad. I had bills to pay. I made an OnlyFans and I, I did some wild stuff. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. it we should be we shouldn't be scrutinizing a gay dude for being outed as gay when you have so many other uh, issues going on in the world, specifically America, specifically Oklahoma, uh, and the other 49 states. and it, Well, then he had know, to have denied. I don't want to keep talking about this yeah. guy, but why is he so out by it, especially in today's society? That should have been like, a, oh, you're in, you're in the good now. I mean, Not like, when you like, I mean, like Like, if you like women, you don't want that out there. Like, uh, imagine if he's talking to, like, a, a baddie right now, and she's in the DMs, mm -hmm. and, and then sees this Twitter beef pop up on her timeline and she's like, Whoa, I just seen you get railed by a big black dude. What is that? Do you think you're bagging her? Do you think mm. she's going to go out on a date with you after that? The after girls in 2024? Probably. <laughs> you're probably right. I know. Um, what that's, am I doing that's wrong? A, that's the society we live in. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> what? Well, it's 2024. Why you really look at it between me? men and women. What ethic? What moral ethics is there anymore? There's, There's not. not. There's it's not. just not. Yeah. No, but I get what you're saying. You're right. I mean, there is. Yeah, there's like some it. truth to that. And that, for a for a for a woman that is actually stands up for things that are right. I know. Yeah. It's and just, they're far and few between. I'm trying to imagine trying to tell my wife like, yo, it, it was well before we got together. Man, no, we're yeah, gonna be like, like that gig like, paid ten grand. I get know, off me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the problem? Why did you do that? Do you like your shoes? Like that was ten grand. Yeah. What would you do for ten grand? <laughs> Is it record? You said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Like, you said I'm you not cheesecake. I'm not saying that I agree with it. You know, but like, I don't know the circumstance. <laughs> I don't know. I got better crap to do. Yeah, it's insane. actually I don't have better stuff to do is here and talk about gay people because yeah. that's obviously what we're doing. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> but, it, 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 it's just like it's a very double sided thing because typically I'm like, eh, anything gay related, I'm, I'm usually opposed to just because I, in my morals and values, see it as kind of a, a slippery slope that goes downhill very fast. Mm -hmm. But and we all we have to do is go back to Californians yeah. advocating to not yeah. pass a bill well, against. The best thing purchasing children for sex. The best thing that could have been done with this gay rapper was to never say anything. Because I've said this before. Positive press is not as good as negative press. It's not, yeah. And the thing of it is, this gay rapper that was nobody a week or two ago, whatever it was, is now somebody 
because his name is everywhere. Yeah, Lil Nas X is another prime you know? example. Of, and so of using that's that. what happens. You may have a valid point and be like, dude, you're a freaking hypocrite. You're a disgrace to the LGBT community or whatever they're saying. But I'm like, you just made this dude famous. You you yeah. you will yep. you made this dude famous. That's what all happened right. with By that commenting. dude that made that one song, was Oliver. Yeah, Oliver North. Yeah, not that it was bad. Richmond, North of Richmond. But it was just it was just something that got out there. It went viral, and it just they made him famous. Yep. You know and he that happened with up. that happened with the uh, uh, the Jason Aldean song. Mm. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly. Which he's already famous, but that was like what it did is it put him on the it put him on the charts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you know, for the first time in like that. Yeah. Decade people were or complaining like about it. It just it got all these likes and shares, yep. and everybody's yep. watching it. And so like they didn't do this guy no favor. So like if you want to really hurt people on social media, don't well, talk they, about them. They they call it culture war for a reason. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I have. I personally don't care for the whole, uh, I'm not going to give this attention because I don't want to give that person a platform or whatever. To me, it's like, look, at the end of the day, their platform is big enough that you saw it and are now wanting to react to it. Mm -hmm. So just react to the thing. Just talk about the issue, whatever yeah. it is that, that well, you're Well, I mean, seeing. I think there's ways you can talk about it if you're really trying to inflict, you know, pain or, or but, but, you're trying to denounce them. But we're all so polarized, though, at the end of the day, and this kind of goes back into what you're saying a little bit, we're so divided, we're, we're so polarized that the, the moment, this man could be 100% wrong in everything he did from start to finish in this situation, but he's still going to find a ton of supporters just because those supporters hate Ooh, the they wrong do. thing people that don't, he did. People don't have standards. They don't look at music. You know, I could... I could give you a thousand upstanding Christians that listen to garbage music yeah. and watch garbage. You know what TV. I'm saying? They don't, they don't have the standards, you know, like yeah. it's not like, Oh, well we're living in a very highly populated Christian area, which by definition we are, but look at what we've stood for. It's definitely yeah. contradicts itself. So like people will sit there and, and do one thing and say one thing and look a certain way on social media. Women are the most guilty of it. You find this hot, attractive woman on there. Well, take her off social media, and you'll see a different beast behind that makeup. Yeah, it's it, it's scary. You know, like you know, being a young man. It's there. like I mean, I've seen it, man. I I know girls like man. It's like man, y'all. They you, are completely different you know, without like, makeup. And I'm not saying they're like ugly by no means, but whenever you see them without makeup compared to what they, I'm like, no, you're ugly. You know, compared. and they're not. Yeah, compared. exactly. Yeah, and like, and then there's other people that wear that stuff, and I'm like. Take it off. You ain't, you ain't helping your yeah. cause. Yeah, take it off. You know, like, I know a lady right now, <laughs> whatever. I I mean, like, you look, you're borderline drag, mm. you know? And I'm yeah, like, that's, that's you can't decide level. what color of hair you want. You got green, whether it be blue. I'm like, do you need to do something? You just, just take the makeup off. You'd be better without it. Like, maybe nobody told you that, but, you know, I wasn't that guy. You know, like, my wife can't, does this make me look fat? Does this look good? Nope. I told her the truth because the thing of it is not because I was embarrassed to be out there. She's asking my opinion. Why am I going to yeah. lie to her? Right. Yeah. And, and she's asking for an honest opinion. You know? But that, that kind of gets back into just the whole thing you know, in like, general. Does this make me look fat? Does this make me? No, it's fat. That's why you look fat. Yeah. I you mean, know, I'm like not saying about my wife. It's like me. Somebody's like, does this shirt make my belly look big? No, my belly just big to begin with. It ain't the shirt. Yeah. I don't know. There's, I mean, it's like, come on. There, there's definitely a lot of levels to it, but it, it just comes back down to basic division, which is... Girl, uh, man, I, just, I just have all these bad you know, visions right now. I see this big old fat lady coming in and spandex. She's making me look fat. Like, no. <laughs> the cottage, she does. You yeah, know? Yeah, Those pants cream. that should fit on a five-year-old and you're, you're a grown woman, 400 pounds. No, no. You, you make them look fat. It ain't the clothes. Yeah, it's... Well, <laughs> it's I mean, the truth, man. But, 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 that, but then, even then, though, you, you can't say she's fat. She's just big-bodied. Okay. We use the word obesity in America. So the other to. biggest we epidemic and next to COVID. But yeah, we don't yeah. we don't talk yeah. about that. Yeah, that, there's and a the government, topics. you know, you start getting into that, there's actually a lot of good stuff that, good thing to talk about maybe on an episode. There's actually stuff out there that's proven good weight loss um for obese people. But yet the government won't fund it. The government won't get this stuff out there to people. You're talking about Ozempic. There's several things along that lines. Um, several, the government won't back it. The government won't fund it because it's not FDA approved. They can. F Here's the thing: they can FDA approve some injection that we don't know what's going to do. 
for COVID in a very short amount of time. We've got one of the biggest epi- pan I say pandemic, you know, you say epidemic, whatever word you want to use there. We've got a problem in the United States of America with obesity. And there's actually stuff that can fix this and help it. And the government won't FDA approve it. They won't stand behind it. And big pharma too. Because this stuff, even for people like diabetics that need this stuff, it's in very, very short demand. Well, and they're and intentionally doing it. That's what I was going to say. So now, but then you get into the, the real question here, which is why haven't we cured cancer? And that's because then you get into the, the age old response, which is because there's no money in it. Yeah, there's, uh, I believe there's no, cures for cancer. I, no, I really do there believe is. that. They just, just like this, I know it's a small comparison. They don't want to release it yeah. because then the funding stops. And to put it in the perspective, too, uh, you know, you, you talk about not funding uh, drugs that can actually help people lose weight, et cetera, uh, versus give in, not getting the FDA approval. But then we go ahead and do that for Oxycontin mm-hmm. um, and look at what the results of that. Fentanyl. Uh, you know, it, it, it led into fentanyl, but initially Oxycontin is what got the, the opioid epidemic to... What are they going to do? Imagine it's the United States, they start shipping massive truckloads of weight loss medication into the United States. People, it wouldn't help. I'm tell, it wouldn't help, but people, maybe they're... I should not even solicit crime, but I'm like... I'm sitting here thinking, like, what would it be like? You know, you got the meth and coke. What would it be like if there was actually drug dealers that shipped in like, weight loss medication? Like steroids, you know. Or yeah, exactly. Insane, like, have this black market for weight loss medication. It, it'd, probably, it'd probably sell. It'd probably be popular. We got um, to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, no, it, I mean, look, there's, there's just so many levels to, like, uh, as a society, what, what do you want to focus on? What, what matters? What's important? And, you know, I, I feel like the, the best thing that was stated in this is the question of how would the government respond if black people and white people came together, united, and said, quit messing with us? And I, I honestly don't have a good answer for that. I don't know how the government will respond other than a totalitarian form of uh, opposition, and that and psyops. You know, if there's one thing the government's good for, it's psyops. And thought it was lying. Uh, but that goes into it. Uh, because like the the beauty of a, of a good psyop is lie, 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 truth. Lie, 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 truth. Lie, 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 lie. You see what I'm saying? So there's kernels of <laughs> Is truth. that like your rapper? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sketch. Sing it one more time. Yeah, no, I definitely couldn't do that twice. Um, <laughs> lie, 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 lie. <laughs> truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds like it. Mumble, a, mumble, mumble. No. Um, but at the end of the day, what I'm getting at here is that... Just remember, people, yeah. on the air, he said he's an autistic rapper, not me. Yeah, I know, and I, I'm i probably so wrong on that. He's probably Could be some, worse. Could have called him retarded. Some poor guy. I mean... That's look, where... It, but like again, it. I say yeah. that because that's where you say that word, and people's like, you can't oh. say that about people. Yeah, I mean... Like, I don't go around calling people retarded. I use the word just like... You know, like gay. You can't even say it more. You're like yeah, that sure. was a thing years ago. You're like that's, that's so gay. gay. It was that's just another way of saying so it's stupid. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about a group of people. You know, and the like, same thing you, when you say fag? like, "Hey, that's <laughs> retarded." We're not referring to a group of people. We're saying it's stupid. You know, but we can't. That's just like the pronouns. That's how dumb this is these days. Like, you can't use certain words because it's going to offend somebody it's, that's got a kid that actually has an issue. I mean, I get that, but we're not talking about your kid. Yeah. Here's the the crazy part to me about dudes, you know, leading up to this whole crazed phenomenon uh, is back in the day, dudes still to this day act gay. But the moment like someone opens up their feelings or talks about a, a bad breakup, it's like, what are you, a faggot? And like, you can't even say that anymore. You know what I mean? Without getting canceled. And it's like, what is that? Because there, there used to be like a, hey, dude, you're being a pussy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or like that, that kind of logic or thinking. And that, that part hasn't changed, but the verbiage. It's oh, it's changed fact. over the years. You did yeah. that crap years good. Like, shut up. Nobody cares. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like that, that still takes place. And it's like, um, oh, let me tell my little friends at school that I'm heartbroken. Yeah. Because little Johnny, little Susie hurt my feelings. I'd be yes. like, dude, shut up. Dude, I saw this. Grow thing. up I and find this. another girlfriend. Do something else. I saw this insane video, and we'll wrap up with this, where this lady's like, uh, I lost my mom, and can you guys, like she was talking to her phone, like her audience, she said, can you guys pretend to be my mom so I can tell you about my day? And really? this man 
like cuts to him of him laying on the ground as she's talking and he's like playing dead. And it was just so funny to me that he would take her so literally, will you pretend to be my mom and listen to me as I talk to you about my day and him laying on the ground. I don't know. It sounds like that. I seen one where there was this older guy I'm saying in his mid late twenties and this little kid says, what's up kid? I got bullied. I got bullied for being for being gay, and he goes, you, you know, he basically says some contact. Well, you better basically it's about to happen again, <laughs> you know. But see, these are like viral videos. Yeah, yeah I know it's funny, but like, yeah, you know, I mean, look, I, I've seen day. it, man. Even man, I was playing a game. It's been about two weeks ago. If there was a kid that I could ever hear in his voice, it sounds like he's gay. No, no, no. You hear that quite a bit, actually. It was just like. Depressed, the depression oh, was just coming, man. Because so, man, I'm like pretty hot into a game. Me and, and another guy's friend I was playing, then you know, we played with a rando, so it was fine, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't mind. Some of them's right. pretty good. I don't mind carrying people every once in a while. And so, we're carrying this kid through, and he's like, I need to go into this, did this other dark ether, you know, for Modern Warfare 3, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not just a harder part of the game, I'm trying to make it where you can understand. No, I'm not, we're not down with that. Here's what we're already set out to do, this is what we're equipped to do. Okay, you know I'm like, uh, oh man, you know I'm yeah. like, clearly this is a kid, man. I'm like, man, you know, man, I I can't do this right now. I'm like, I'm not equipped. I'm not ready. I'm not, you know, we're working on other things, and that's what we were mat- built for that match. So I was like, hey, dude, if you don't want to go in here, just, 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 just leave the group, you know, and and you can you can go out, squat out and go alone. Okay, I'll go by myself then. I'm just like. This dude's gonna kill us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just depression, depression. I'm Doesn't like, man, dark that is one of the very few occasions where I actually cared too much about what. I was like, man, I, I would like to. Look, I like to look that person up. And be like, are you are you really okay? Yeah, you good? Yeah, yeah like he had no friends besides yeah. a video game. And well, the thing uh, of it is, that's a reality yeah. though. Sometimes too, you know. Like, that's scary. now I will say this, and when we're talking about the gaming community, um, that, that's a very tight knit community right there and you can develop friendships with individuals there is i mean i've i've met so, a lot of people I've, man i've also a lot of met a lot of cry babies that yeah, freaking yeah. complain about everything man i was playing again another game man i could go on and on about this i was playing another game and there's these three things in the game I'm trying to make this where everybody can kind of you know they're really not really a strong hard to get to but it's basically first come first serve you know whatever so if i go in there and people in modern warfare if you're listening to this i know there's a lot of people's gonna like this and a lot of people's gonna hate this i take it all i don't care i don't care if you think i should share it's a game like i don't care you know that's so and wrong. i've been in there freaking lit these things i get to and another guy come in and i know how to i know how to cheat him out of them you know and there's a lot of people who do that and <laughs> this guy's like you're an effing dick I'm like, yep. And I just go ahead and continue <laughs> about it, you know, like and then I will haunt you the rest of the game. Like I won't leave you alone. I've had yeah. people try that with me in the game. They'll try to sit there and tag uh, along yeah. and do stuff. Camp. I can ruin your life in that game. Yeah. And and a lot of the pro players I think they know, you know, I don't consider myself a pro pro, pro player, but I know I can compete I can play with the best of them in there. And, you know, they know these things. And and so you there's what I'm saying is I'm not this guy, but there is people that they do nothing more in this game to just go in there to ruin everybody else's. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's almost like the dudes who like repeatedly shout the N word uh, at a at a guy online that it's like you don't even yeah. know if he's actually black. He sounds black. I'll give you that. Yeah. But like to just go straight into racial slurs and. Your mama this, your mama that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just like... It, it's, well, I might have seen both sides. People levels, talking crap, levels you know? The gaming. In the same situation, man. I go in there and just clean house on this stuff, get all this. You're a dick. You're taking everything. It's like, well, I would have gave you one if you'd have just asked. But yeah. since you're being stupid, you know, and then I'm the type I'm like, here, dude, I'll just throw it on the ground. Bag. Well, no, I'm I'm not that guy. I just taunt you. I throw, I saw I'd like throw these pack three crystals and a legendary tool on the ground for this guy. And he goes, oh, man, thanks. And I go over and pick them back up and run <laughs> off. That's how you deal with people like that. You know, he's all like, yeah, they, yeah demeanor change now because yeah. you get a handout. No, you want something we work for. It's what I had to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's there's levels to gaming, but at the end of the day, I, I would say that there can be healthy relationships built online. Uh, it's just more often than not, people don't do that in moderation. Oh, they're entitled, man. Yeah. They're entitled so. on video games, too. They think everything should be just left to them. And, you know, there's like 24 players in the match. Why did you do that? Why did you take that? 
I paid 80 bucks for the game just like you did. I have to pay my PlayStation Premium. Just I mean, It's there for the taking. They didn't yeah. put it in there and say, this is Joe's only. Leave this chest alone until he gets here. One per player. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, nah, it's first come, sir, buddy. It's called skill. If you don't like my skill, if you need to get up to par, then get up to par. Look, the last thing I'll say, and we'll wrap this up. Fortnite players are the worst about the whole looting aspect of things. Like, you'll you'll have the takers for sure. The, I don't care who shot who. I'm just taking the loot and going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you have the people who get beyond upset if you like if they downed a man and and ended up taking him out and he drops all of his uh, weapons and whatnot and you go over there and take anything out of it. They're like supremely pissed off at you. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. We're talking about a video game. Like, look, yeah. at the end of the day, are people we on a get, team or not? Yeah, people get really intense on that. I mean, I see it in multiplayer, yeah. you know, playing Resurgence and stuff like that, you know. And, yeah, I mean, it's like they shoot you. You're going to spawn back in. Does it go back down? There? Usually, not always, but usually they ain't picking up your gun. Just go back to where you just yeah. get killed. Pick it back up and roll. It's just You know, you can only carry so much. It's just bananas that, that that's the the point that we're at, that, you know, like we're, we're fighting over online resources because physical resources just aren't enough. Mm-hmm. You know, we we're, we got to dominate every aspect, whether it's Call of Duty or well, climate change. You get me on a video <laughs> game, I'm dominating. If I can't dominate and kick your butt, like, I, but I don't like getting mad about it. But you just, you got it. I didn't have that skill level when I first started playing. But I played and played and played and, and you know, I worked for it. You know, I, I didn't have no time. handing out. So, you know, that's what you got to do. Not get on there and be like, oh, can somebody do this? For no. Figure it out yourself, man. I'm not say figure it out yourself. It's the internet. People yeah, get on and I ask know, stupid stuff. Like, how do I do it? I'm like, Google it. Yeah, literally. You know? Either way, we can well, talk about that on another episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Please drop a comment. I mean, I know I've got to do my own research on maybe some political opponents here in Oklahoma. Uh, but either way, the, the point of it being here, smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe because this channel needs the help. Okay? You know, so share with your friends. Let people know not all black people are lazy and they definitely <laughs> do contribute to society. You know, that that should have been the main takeaway from this whole entire conversation. <laughs> should have been, but there's a lot more discussing that. <laughs> no, but either way, thank you all for listening. Have a great night.